Hello viewers and uh, welcome to my channel and today's topic is pelvic laparoscopy and what is it? What's its purpose? How to prepare for this test? How do doctors perform this procedure? And the results, you know, so but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease, any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And the link is just below this video in the description. So now come to the topic, what is pelvic laparoscopy, you know. You know, uh, during a lapros uh, laparoscopy, vaginal laparoscopy, you know, sorry, pelvic laparoscopy, you know, uh, your doctor uses an instrument which is called laparoscope uh, to examine your reproductive organs you know and uh, laparoscope is a long and thin tube with a highly uh, like uh, high intensity light and high resolution cameras at the end you know so your doctor uh, pushes the laparoscope uh, through an incision uh, into your abdominal wall and the camera like relays images that are uh, projected onto the video monitor you know so your reproductive organs can be examined without performing open surgery you know and uh, your doctor can also use the pelvic laparoscopy to obtain a biopsy which means a piece of uh, the cells from the or area you know just to see under the microscope if there is any kind of abnormality in that area you know like cancers etc you know and uh, you know the pelvic laparoscopy is uh, a called a like minimally invasive procedure you know uh, because only small incisions are made you know and the minimally invasive procedures often have a shorter recovery period uh, less blood loss and lower levels of post-surgical pain and uh, uh, if compared to the open surgery you know uh, uh, this is also known as like a, a band-aid surgery or maybe uh, celluscopy you know or maybe exploratory laparoscopy or maybe gynecological laparoscopy or maybe uh, uh, pelviscopy you know so these are the different names used for the same medical condition you know? so same procedure you know now next thing is what is the purpose why do doctors advise this test you know or perform this test you know you know the doctors use uh, many imaging techniques to observe the pelvic abnormalities you know and these techniques include ultrasound uh, x-rays CD scans MRIs and your doctor may use a pelvic laparoscopy after your uh, uh, like any other non-invasive test you know uh, that has been used you know and the procedure may be able to uh, provide the more detailed uh, information when the data gathered through these other methods cannot provide like a definitive diagnosis you know so in that case your doctor will uh, order this uh, uh, pelvic laparoscopy you know to see the pelvic organs more closely you know <clears throat> and uh, your doctor can use the pelvic laparoscopy to investigate or treat the conditions affecting the uterus the ovaries uh, fallopian tubes and other organs in the pelvic area you know and uh, your doctor may recommend this test if uh, uh, to determine the cause of the pelvic pain you know or maybe to examine an uh, abnormality such as uh, uh, ovarian cysts or tumor tumors and maybe the uh, tissue mass in the uterus and the pelvic area you know uh, to confirm the presence of endometriosis you know so endometriosis is a condition in which the cells from the lining of the uterus grow outside of your uh, like uh, uterine cavity you know and uh, to diagnose a pelvic inflammatory disease or maybe to examine your fallopian tubes for any obstruction or any kind of uh, like uh, ectopic pregnancies you know or to investigate uh, the conditions that might cause infertility 
are observed the extent of ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, or maybe the cervical cancer, you know. So in that case, your doctor will advise this test, you know. And uh, during the test, your doctor may take the biopsy of any abnormal mass or cyst, you know. So just to see under microscope the status of those uh, cells, you know, are they cancerous or they're non-cancerous, you know. And this is a very important test, you know. And uh, uh, by using the video monitor, you know, your doctor, uh, it guides your doctor to, so it can see or it can obtain a tissue uh, sample biopsy, you know, or uh, eliminate the scar tissue or maybe the abnormal like uh, tissue from the endometriosis, you know, or maybe uh, repair or damage the uterus, you know, uh, damage the damage uterus, you know, so it can repair the damage, you know, so uh, remove any kind of uh, uh, ectopic pregnancy, you know, or maybe perform the appendectomy, you know, or perform a hysterectomy as well, you know. To remove the uterus and uh, with this uh, the help of this procedure you can perform the tubal ligation okay which is a sterilization method for the in the woman you know where the fallopian tubes are tied you know so it can also be used to remove any lymph nodes uh, affected by the pel like uh, uh, pelvic cancers you know so it's a multi-purpose procedure, you know, so it's a very important procedure. Well, the next thing is about the preparation, you know, before the procedure. Well, usually you will, more or less you will prepare the same way that you would for any other surgical procedure, you know, like uh, uh, you should tell your doctor that uh, if you're taking any prescription medications, you know, like blood thinning medications or any other medications, you know. And uh, there are certain medications that could affect the outcome of the laparoscopy, like uh, uh, anticoagulants or the blood thinners and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, you know, and say it's the medications that affect your blood, uh, blood clotting. Uh, you know, so herbal or any kind of supplements, you know. So you should tell your doctor if you are taking any kind of medications. Uh, so your doctor may request like uh, additional imaging tests like MRI or CT scan or ultrasound, you know, before surgery. And the data from that imaging study can help the doctor uh, to better understand the abnormalities they are investigating or areas spe specifically they are investigating, you know. And the imaging results can also provide your doctor with the visual guide to pelvic organs, uh, region, improving the effectiveness, you know. So you cannot eat or drink anything uh, for at least eight hours before the procedure. So if you smoke, you should try to quit, okay. And ask a friend or the family member to drive you uh, to the surgery if your doctor gives you the sedatives to take. Uh, home before the procedure, you know, and uh, this data will impair your ability to drive. So always uh, ask any family friend uh, to drive you to the hospital and uh, uh, just for the safety purpose, you know. Uh, you know, a pelvic laparoscopy can be done in a hospital, but it is usually performed as an outpatient, you know. And uh, before the surgery, you will be asked to change into the hospital gown. Then an intravenous line will be inserted into your hand or maybe in the arm, you know. And uh, you will get the general anesthesia in most cases, you know. So uh, this will allow you to remain in a deep sleep and you will not feel anything, you know, pain, etc., you know. And uh, in other cases, you will get a local anesthetic, you know. And this type of anesthesia prevents you from feeling pain in your pelvic area during the procedure, but you will be awake, you know. And uh, it will not put you to sleep, okay. And uh, uh, you may feel like uh, pricking or the burning sensation when your doctor like injects the local anesthesia into the pelvis, you know. And uh, you may still feel pressure with the laparoscope during the procedure, and uh, but you shouldn't feel the pain, you know. 
So your doctor will make a small incision above the navel, you know, about uh, like, uh, it will be about the half inch long, okay? And a narrow tube will be inserted, uh, which is called a canola, you know, uh, which will be placed into your abdominal cavity to expand the cavity with the, like uh, uh, a carbon dioxide, you know. So this makes uh, room in that area for your doctor to work, you know, and uh, uh, it allows for a clear view, you know. So they will then insert a laparoscope uh, through that NCR uh, near to you. Uh, your that navel you know and uh, up to four like uh, uh, dime sized cuts will be made closer to those and that uh, pubic hairline you know and uh, these cuts allow the space for the additional canolas and other tools that uh, will be needed to perform the procedure you know so your doctor will uh, insert a like uh, uterine uh, manipulator you know uh, through your cervix into your uterus and this will uh, help uh, to move the like uh, uh, pelvic organs uh, for the proper view you know and your doctor will remove the instruments and uh, the gas from your body and will close all the like incisions once the surgery has been completed and the bandages will be placed over the stitches used to close the uh, your incisions you know uh, the next thing is about the recovery after this procedure, you know, well, you will need to remain in the outpatient facility or hospital for recovery and observation before you can be released to go home, you know. And the doctors and the nurses will monitor your vital signs, including like blood pressure, your temperature, your heart rate, your breathing rate, your pulse, you know. And the amount of the time that you will need to stay in the recovery room will depend on your overall physical condition and the type of anesthesia which was used, you know, and uh, your body's reaction to the procedure. So in some cases, you may need to remain in hospital overnight, you know, but most of the time you don't need, you know, unless you have any complication. You know. So you will be discharged once the effects of the anesthesia have worn off and uh, you won't be permitted to drive yourself home after the procedure. Uh, there should be someone to drive home. And after the pelvic laparoscopy, you may feel like slightly pain at the areas of uh, incision, you know, and you may have the abdominal bloating or maybe discomfort from the carbon dioxide uh, uh, for up to two days, you know. And uh, it's not uncommon to have like uh, shoulder pain after the procedure, you know. And uh, this is, occurs when the carbon dioxide gas causes an irritation in your diaphragm you know so which uh, is the muscle that like uh, share the nerves with the shoulder you know so you may feel the shoulder pain for maybe a couple of days you know uh, maybe sore throat uh, and uh, you know it may be caused by the breathing tubes you know so uh, every person reacts differently to the procedure so Follow your doctor's discharge instructions carefully. And uh, you will be instructed uh, not to leave the heavy weights for up to three weeks after the procedure. You know. And uh, this will reduce your risk of developing the hernias you know, because of those incisions, you know. And uh, you can resume your normal diet and uh, you will need to return to your doctor about two weeks after uh, the procedure. Or the follow-up appointment will your doctor will discuss the results with you you know well the pelvic laparoscopy is considered a surgical procedure you know so the most common complications are bleeding and infections you know and uh, these risks are minimal but still it's important to be aware of those signs of the infection you know like fever or maybe vaginal bleeding or chills you know and uh, redness or swelling or the drainage from the CNs, you know, so uh, shortness of breath, you know, or maybe nausea and vomiting. So in that case, you should consult your doctor, you know. Or uh, a rare complication is the reaction to the anesthesia, you know, uh, inflammation uh, of the abdomen, you know, and maybe blood clots, you know, uh, or maybe 
you may need sometimes a blood transfusion or maybe uh, sometimes you know so if you have any problem you should consult your doctor the next thing is about the results you know when your doctor uh, will analyze the findings you know and if the biopsy has been taken uh, your result will be back by the follow-up appointment you know and the normal results of the pelvic examination uh, pelvic laparoscopic uh, procedure indicates the or reproductive organs and any other organs examined uh, are normal in size and appearance and a normal report is uh, also documents the absence of cysts uh, tumors and other abnormalities in that area you know and uh, the abnormal laparoscopy results can indicate uh, like maybe adhesions or surgical scars you know uterine fibroids uh, cancers cysts or maybe hernias or injury or the trauma you know or maybe obstruction in the fallopian tubes or maybe ovarian cysts you know and uh, the pelvic inflammatory disease so uh, the test will show if there is any kind of abnormality you know and your doctor may need to order more lab tests you know followed by the physical examination and the laparoscopic examination you know uh, to make the definitive diagnosis you know and uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com thank you and goodbye